518 BC, the Hall of Records of the Zhou Dynasty. Lao Tzu and Confucius, the great Chinese philosophers, encounter each other here. It is said that Confucius once asked Lao Tzu the meaning of propriety, but Lao Tzu replied by explaining the Tao, the source of all existence, revealing the deep connection between humanity and nature. Not long after, Lao Tzu left his government post and rode off beyond the western frontier on an ox. He left behind a text, 5,000 characters long, that summarized his entire philosophy known to posterity as the Tao Te Ching. Lao Tzu was gone, but now Confucius started to propound his doctrine to the four corners of the land, establishing a school in order to instruct the people. In the society that Confucius envisioned, elders would be respected and the young protected. Rulers would act with benevolence, gaining the people's loyalty in return. This social order embodied the concept of propriety that Confucius held paramount. The teachings of Confucius and Lao Tzu form the philosophical basis of Chinese culture. They both upheld the doctrine of the unity of humanity and nature. These two great philosophers were deified by subsequent generations of Chinese people. But they were never able to implement their ideas during their lifetimes. This was due to the continuous war between states for national hegemony that lasted from the 8th century BC until 221 BC. The legend of Qin Shi Huang, the first emperor of the Qin dynasty, revolves around one word, unification. Qin Shi Huang founded the Qin Dynasty in 221 BC, transforming China into a unified empire and establishing himself as China's first emperor. He standardized China's systems of writing, currency, and weights and measures, instituted harsher laws, and even attempted to enforce a single ideology. To consolidate China's defenses, Qin Shi Huang ordered that the existing segments of the Great Wall be joined together and extended. The Great Wall is China's most massive ancient military fortification. Stretching across northern China for over 5,000 kilometers, it can still be seen today, one of the great wonders of the world.
Qin Shi Huang's might accompanied him into his tomb after his death. Over 8,000 terracotta warriors and horses, more than 100 wooden war chariots, and numerous bronze weapons have been unearthed from the first emperor's burial site. Merely one company of a vast underground army, these figures reflect the military might with which Qin Shi Huang unified China. The capital of the Qin dynasty was located in Xianyang. All that remains today are fragments of walls, hinting at stories of the past. In 206 BC, rebels occupied the Qin capital. Four years later, the Han Dynasty established its capital in Chang'an. Xianyang and Chang'an both were located near present-day Xi'an. Over the course of 1,100 years, 13 dynasties established their capitals at this location. China has had many capitals throughout its lengthy history. They include Luoyang and Kaifeng in central China, Nanjing and Hangzhou in the south, and Beijing in the north. Today, these cities continue to reflect the culture of ancient China. Beijing has been China's capital for 850 years. As the capital of the People's Republic of China, it is a political, economic, and cultural center of the nation. With an economy traditionally based on agriculture, the Chinese people started to observe celestial phenomena early in their history. The Spring and Autumn Annals, compiled in the 5th century BC, describes the appearance of Halley's Comet in 613 BC. This is the world's earliest confirmed record of this comet. In the 1970s, archaeologists excavating a 2,000-year-old tomb discovered an astronomical chart containing detailed descriptions of 29 comets. Testing determined that the chart dates from China's Warring States period over 2,500 years ago.
Zhang Hong was an illustrious astronomer of ancient China. In 117 AD, Zhang Hong conceived and fabricated the water-driven armillary sphere and used it to analyze celestial phenomena. He later calculated the angle between the Earth's ecliptic and the equator to be 24 degrees. In 132 AD, Zhang Hung invented the world's first directional seismograph. He used it to measure seismic activity for the first time in 138 AD. China is famous throughout the world for its porcelain. It is said that as porcelain is also called China in the West, the land where it was first invented is named China by Westerners. Examples of China's most ancient porcelain, over 3,500 years old, may still be seen today. Starting in the first century BC, new advances in glazing techniques gave rise to many different styles of porcelain. Exquisite pieces bearing a rare glaze known as secret celadon first appeared around the seventh century AD. Blue and white glaze became popular during the 13th century AD, another milestone in the development of Chinese porcelain. Jingdezhen in Jiangxi province is the porcelain capital of China and is famous for its blue and white porcelain. From the 14th century AD to the present, Jingdezhen has remained China's center of porcelain production. The main categories of Chinese tea are green tea, black tea, oolong tea, and scented tea. Famous varieties include West Lake Longjing green tea, Qimun black tea, Anxi Tieguanyin tea, and jasmine tea from Suzhou. Combining fine tea, clear water, beautiful utensils, and congenial company, Chinese people drink tea not only for its fresh, natural flavor, but also to achieve a heightened appreciation of life. Therefore, the art of tea drinking is also known as the tea ceremony.
The tea ceremony evolved from the process of preparing, serving, and enjoying tea, gradually developing into a comprehensive tea culture. By the 7th century AD, the tea ceremony had spread throughout China. Tea and Buddhism are intimately connected. The Tang Dynasty emperors made offerings of tea to Sakyamuni, the founder of Buddhism. China's oldest tea set, over 1300 years old, was found in the vaults of the Buddhist Faman Temple. According to Zen Buddhism, tea is a reflection of nature. It is believed that drinking tea can purify the spirit and enable the drinker to attain harmony with nature. Chinese characters originated from pictographic symbols, gradually evolving into different styles, including seal characters, official and regular scripts, grass style, and running hand scripts. Chinese writing brushes are very supple, well suited to producing the variegated lines of Chinese calligraphy. Calligraphy is more than just writing with a brush. Using various types of brushwork, calligraphers create works of art that convey their unique characters and styles. Calligraphy is a highly philosophical art. Unity and balance of composition are paramount, expressed through opposing elements such as hard and soft, thick and thin, slanted and upright, dense and sparse. Calligraphy and traditional Chinese painting share the same origins. The two art forms use essentially the same tools and employ similar artistic concepts. Traditional landscape painting often uses shifting perspective to portray panoramic vistas or groups of people. Blank areas create imaginary space, while beautiful and poetic calligraphy describes the work's subject matter. The vermilion seals of painters and previous owners indicate a work's provenance and history. In portraiture and bird and flower painting, the representation of form is merely the basis for revealing essence. Contemporary Chinese artists work from nature to more deeply know their subject matter, 
allowing its spirit to take form in their heart. In the studio, real life and inner vision become one in the sweep of the brush. In one transcendent moment, the artist achieves the ultimate goal of traditional Chinese philosophy, the unity of heaven and humanity. This 800-year-old scroll painting is an exquisitely detailed depiction of the people of Kaifeng at the Festival of Clear Brightness. This traditional Chinese festival falls around the 5th of April every year. On this day, ceremonies are held to honor the Yellow Emperor, the legendary ancestor of the Chinese people. Families visit their ancestral graves and pay their respects to their departed loved ones. It is also a time for outings to the countryside, flying kites, and enjoying the beauty of springtime. The sorrow of death and the joy of life are thus combined in a single day. Chinese philosophy holds that opposites are inseparable and that the cycle of life and death exemplifies natural law. Death is considered in or receptive, and life is yang or active. The festival of clear brightness embodies the mutual interaction of in and yang. The concept of yin and yang arose from the Chinese ancestors' first observations of the world. Heaven and earth, day and night, life and death, male and female, hard and soft, yang originally meant light, symbolizing the active principle and outer strength. Yin, or absence of light, symbolizes the receptive principle and inner strength. Both opposing and unified, the interplay of yin and yang endlessly generates new life. All things in the world arise from this process of mutual interaction and transformation. Yin and yang is not merely a philosophical concept. It permeates every aspect of life in China and serves as a continuing source of inspiration for contemporary Chinese society. <laughs> 